when the day of Pentecost came, they were all together in one place. Suddenly a sound like the blowing of a violent wind came from heaven and filled the whole house where they were sitting. They saw what seemed to be tongues of fire that separated and came to rest on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other tongues as the Spirit enabled them. Part one of Unmasking the Holy Spirit has opened the eyes to a lot of our people on their spiritual journey. Israelites, when you begin to understand the role of the Holy Spirit and how the Most High used the Holy Spirit to guide you in everything that you do, you will begin to see how the Most High show himself strong through you. Every single one of you who have never recognized the power of the Most High in your life will begin to see his sovereignty when you humble yourself and obey the Most High through his spirit that abides in you. Israelites, the Most High is always looking for someone he could show himself strong through. For the eyes of the Lord run to and fro throughout the whole earth to show himself strong in the behalf of them whose heart is perfect toward him. Herein thou hast done foolishly, therefore, from henceforth, thou shalt have wars. The scriptures said the eyes of the Most High run to and from throughout the world to show himself strong on the behalf of those whose heart is perfect towards him. What does it mean for your heart to be perfect towards the Most High? The Most High want his creation to love and serve him. Keep in mind, Israelites, Having a perfect heart towards the Most High doesn't mean you're sinless, for we all have sinned and fallen short. If you have a good heart, the Most High will reveal himself to you. Most of you don't realize it's all about your heart with the Most High. Keep thy heart with all diligence, for out of it are the issues of life. The story of Cain and Abel is a perfect example of one brother having a hard heart and the other one had a meek heart. The scriptures describe Cain unto having a hard heart, a cruel murderer, and the father to all the sinners. A hard heart brings forth wickedness. A hard heart also gives Satan access to you. Satan was able to influence Cain to murder his own brother. Abel was described to having a meek heart. He loved the Most High and very obedient to his parents. We all know that Abel's life was cut short due to his brother's hard heart. Then Cain, the hard-hearted and cruel murderer, took a large stone and smote his brother with it upon the head until his brains oozed out and he welted in his blood before him, and Cain repented not of what he had done. But as to Abel, he had a meek heart and was obedient to his father and mother, whom he often moved to make an offering because he loved it and prayed and fasted much. Israelites, if you have a meek heart, the Most High will be pleased with you. The Most High will reveal himself to you, just as the Most High accepted and received Abel. Abel had a great spirit that loved the Most High. Having a perfect heart towards the Most High also means loving the Father with all of your heart, mind, and soul. And Abel prayed unto God to accept his offering. Then a divine fire came down and consumed his offering, and God smelt the sweet savor of his offering because Abel loved him and rejoiced in him. And because God was well pleased with him, he sent him an angel of light in the figure of a man who had partaken of his offering. Because he had smelled the sweet savor of his offering, and they comforted Abel and strengthened his heart. The Most High is not looking for the most beautiful the most handsome, or a person with great physical strength. None of that matters to the Most High. It's the Father that does the good work in us to accomplish His will. The Most High chose King David because King David had a heart that was perfect towards the Most High. We all know the story of King David. Although King David had a heart after the Most High, King David was not sinless. Like I said to you prior, Israelites, having a perfect heart towards the Most High doesn't mean you're sinless. Having a perfect heart means that you qualify for the Most High to use you. 
the most high chose to show himself strong through King David because he had a heart that loved the most high. The most high rejected King David's brothers because they did not have a heart that was after the most high. Jesse's oldest sons have the appearance and the qualification the beast culture admires. The Most High doesn't operate like the beast system operates. Israelites, you shouldn't expect the Most High to do anything for you like the beast system does for its followers. The Most High anointed David. The scriptures went on to say after the Most High anointed David, the Holy Spirit came strong on David. Then Samuel took the horn of oil and anointed him in the midst of his brethren. And the spirit of the Lord came upon David from that day forward. So Samuel rose up and went to Ramah. The Most High is looking for Israelites and everyone who is of Adam and Eve's seed with a humble spirit to operate through in the physical realm. If you're prideful, the Most High cannot use you. A prideful person will steal the glory of the Most High just as we are witnessing in the awakening and throughout the beast culture. In the awakening, there are Israelites who actually believe they are the ones waking up the people of the Most High and transforming lives. The spirit of pride have deceived many in the awakening to believe they are the one doing only what the Most High can make happen. The Most High cannot show himself strong through people that would take his glory. Unfortunately, there are a lot of Israelites in the awakening that struggle with the spirit of pride. Many of them are stealing the Most High's glory. The Most High said he would not share his glory with anyone. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. The Most High rather work through the people the world have rejected and don't find to be valuable to them. The Most High will never use a person with a hard heart and pride as big as Lucifer's. A lot of people don't realize that Satan deceived himself. Lucifer said in his heart that he will exalt his throne above the stars of the Most High. He said he will sit in the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. Satan went on to say he would be like the Most High. How can the Most High operate through anyone with an ego so big? The Most High can't get his glory through such a creature. Lucifer is a created being that proclaimed he would be like the one who created him. Due to his pride, the Most High said he would cast him out and bring Lucifer down to hell in the sides of the pits. Yet thou shalt be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. After the Most High finished humbling Lucifer, the scripture said that everyone would be amazed and say, is this the adversary that made the earth tremble and destroy kingdoms? Everyone will see how powerless he truly is. They that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee, saying, Is this the man that made the earth to tremble, that did shake kingdoms? Every Israelite that walk on a pedestal with an overinflated ego because they are an Israelite from the tribe of Judah need to humble themselves. A hard heart and a prideful person cannot do the will of the Most High. They are only good to be used as vessels of dishonor. The Most High did say he has vessels made for honor and some for dishonor. Anyone with a hard heart will find it difficult to submit to the guidance from the Holy Spirit. The Most High has work to do in all of us. All of us are being put through the refiner. In order to inherit the Most High's kingdom and be a part of the bride, the Most High has to put all of us through the refiner. It's when we go through the trials and tribulations, the Most High can strip us of everything that is holding us back from inheriting the coming kingdom. None of us can escape this process. If you're a part of the remnant, you will soon realize that all of this is a big test. We will remain in the land of our captivity so that the Most High can put every generation through the refiner. Everyone who overcome will come out spotless. In order to go through the fire, Israelites, you have to let the Most High do the good work in you. We all have heard about the two-thirds that will be cut off. The one-third that remains, which is the remnant, the Most High will put them through the refiner to cleanse them. And it shall come to pass that in all the land, saith the Lord, two parts therein shall be cut off and die, but the third shall be left therein, and I will bring the third part through the fire and will refine them as silver is refined, and will try them as gold is tried. 
They shall call on my name, and I will hear them. I will say, It is my people, and they shall say, The Lord is my God. Being put through the refiner means you're going to experience obstacles. A lot of Israelites mistake trials and tribulations for inconveniences. Majority of what you go through is the most highest way of cleansing you and removing bad habits and traditions that is a snare to you. Israelites, don't be quick to stop the cleansing process. Everyone that obeys the voice of the Most High, as well as trusts the Most High to order their steps, will see the Most High sovereignty. Also, you will come to appreciate the Holy Spirit that is comforting you in the process. Blessed be God, even the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of mercies, and the God of all comfort, who comforteth us in all our tribulation, that we may be able to comfort them which are in any trouble by the comfort wherewith we ourselves are comforted of God. Israelites, you heard in the book of 1 Samuel, after the Most High anointed King David, the Holy Spirit came upon David and remained with David. After King David received the Holy Spirit, he didn't have to be filled with the Holy Spirit over and over again. Also, on the multiple occasions King David sinned, he didn't need to receive the Holy Spirit a second time. David replaced King Saul. When King David received the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of the Most High departed from King Saul. An evil spirit came upon King Saul to torment him. King Saul was very disobedient, and he sinned multiple times, and the Spirit of the Most High didn't depart from him. It wasn't until King David was anointed, that is when we read in the scriptures of the Holy Spirit departing from King Saul. But the Spirit of the Lord departed from Saul, and an evil spirit from the Lord troubled him. After Samuel anointed Saul to become king, he didn't receive the Spirit of the Most High right away. Samuel gave Saul instructions on how to receive the Spirit. Samuel told Saul that he would meet two men with a donkey in a city called Tabar. From Tabar, he would meet three men, one carrying three kids, and another would be carrying bread, and the other carrying a bottle of wine. Samuel told Saul that the men would give him two loaves of bread. Samuel instructs Saul to go to the hill of the Most High, and from there he will meet prophets coming down from the high place. These prophets will prophesy. Samuel said to Saul, the Spirit of the Most High will come upon him, and he will begin to prophesy with the prophets. Samuel said to Saul that he would be transformed into another man. Samuel said to Saul, when these signs come upon him, that is when he would know the Most High is with him. And it was so that when he had turned his back to go from Samuel, God gave him another heart. And all those signs came to pass that day. And when they came thither to the hill, behold, a company of prophets met him. And the Spirit of God came upon him, and he prophesied among them. And it came to pass, when all that knew him before time saw that, behold, he prophesied among the prophets. Then the people said one to another, What is this that is come unto the son of Kish? Is Saul also among the prophets? And one of the same place answered and said, But who is their father? Therefore it became a proverb, Is Saul also among the prophets? And when he had made an end of prophesying, he came to the high place. The scriptures did not mention what happened to David when the Holy Spirit came upon him. The scripture said Saul prophesied with the prophets when he received the Spirit. On the day of Pentecost, everyone who received the Spirit spoke in tongues. So far, everyone who received the Holy Spirit had their own personal experience. Religion have complicated the words of the Most High. Because the Satans used the workers of iniquity to infiltrate the scriptures, the spirit of confusion is able to deceive many people in and out of the awakening. One of the doctrines that come from Rome is that when you receive the Holy Spirit, you must speak in tongues. There must be evidence of you speaking in tongues. I've never read in the scriptures where King David or King Saul had to show proof they were filled with the Spirit of the Most High. When Peter was speaking to the people as a witness of the Messiah, he said to the people, Repent and be baptized in Yahshua for remission of sins. Peter said to the people they would receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Peter went on to say the Holy Spirit is a promise to them and their children. 
as well as for the future generations and to as many as the Most High shall call. Then Peter said unto them, Repent, and be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is unto you and to your children, and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. The scripture said everyone who received Peter's words was baptized the same day. The scripture said 3,000 souls was added to them. The scriptures didn't say everyone who accepted Peter's words started to speak in tongues and the people passed out and jumping around like they lost common sense. The scripture said the people fellowship, break bread together, and prayed. The evidence of needing to speak in tongues come from Rome, a doctrine of devil inserted into the scriptures to make the people establish covenants with familiar spirits when they become possessed by a holy ghost. Today, in modern religion, the disciples of Satan put it out there that there must be evidence of you speaking in tongues for you to receive the Holy Spirit. A lot of Israelites in the awakening repeat the same doctrine. Due to this doctrine of devil, so many Israelites believe they are without the Holy Spirit, and they must speak in tongues to show the world that they have the Holy Spirit. Where in the scriptures does it say it's a requirement to speak in tongues when you receive the Holy Spirit? Better yet, where in the scriptures does it say when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, it causes you to jump around hysterically and falling out? The scriptures describe a similar experience that happens to a person when an evil spirit come upon them. And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I have brought unto thee my son which hath a dumb spirit. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, and gnasheth with his teeth, and pineth away. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answereth him, and saith, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him unto me. And they brought him unto him. And when he saw him, straightway the spirit tear him, and he fell on the ground and wallowed, foaming. And he asked his father, How long is it to go since this came unto him? And he said, Of a child. And oft times it hath cast him into the fire and into the waters to destroy him. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. The way the scriptures describe what happened to the child with an evil spirit is identical to what happens to the people in the church when the Holy Ghost come upon them. Could the Holy Ghost that come upon the people in the pagan church be unclean spirits? I wouldn't be surprised because the Satans imitate everything the Most High does. The Most High has the Holy Spirit. The Satans have the Holy Ghost. Just like the Most High have a prince over his people and all the righteous, Lucifer is the prince of this world. The Most High has a chosen people. Satan have a chosen people whom the world have accepted. Israelites, let the word of the Most High expose the doctrine of needing evidence by speaking in tongues to have the Holy Spirit. Only the truth of the Most High's words can sanctify his people. Sanctify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. On the day of Pentecost, we know that everyone who received the Holy Spirit started to speak in tongues. What is speaking in tongues? Israelites, the tongues the people started to speak were their native language. The Holy Spirit gave them the ability to speak in various native languages. The tongues the scripture spoke of is not what you hear the modern day pastors in the pagan church utter out of their mouths. During the time of Pentecost, Jerusalem was inhabited by people from every nation. The language that was spoken by the people in Jerusalem at that time was Galilean, according to the scriptures. When the Holy Spirit came, all who received the Spirit began to speak in different languages. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under heaven. Now when this was noised abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. And they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? And how hear we every man in our own tongue, wherein we were born? 
the people who heard them speaking in tongues recognized their native language and was surprised that they heard their native language being spoken. The tongues we hear modern pastors chanting in the church is nothing but made up babble. If the Holy Spirit gives you the gift to speak in various tongues, there must be someone who can interpret what is being said. The men who heard the people who received the Holy Spirit speaking in tongues understood them and recognized their native language. Every Sunday across the world, there are people in the pagan church pretending to receive the Holy Spirit and pretending to speak in tongues. These performances are not accepted by the Most High. Who are the people the Most High sent to interpret what is being said in the middle of the people jumping up and down, falling on the floor, pass out cold? The scripture said, if there's no one to interpret what is being said, the person should remain silent. If any man speak in an unknown tongue, let it be by two or at the most by three and that by course and let one interpret. But if there be no interpreter, let him keep silence in the church. Let him speak to himself and to God. There is no order in the pagan church. The pastors starts to falsify speaking in tongues. Then the pastor turn around and interpret his own Bible. Does their behavior align with what is written in the scriptures? Israelites, I promise, if you read the scriptures without the doctrines of devils from religion, the spirit of confusion cannot have its way with you. I encourage you to purge these doctrines out of your life. Start over like newborn babes in the scriptures. Allow the Most High to teach you his truth through his Holy Spirit. Israelites, not everyone who received the Holy Spirit is going to speak in tongues. When David received the Holy Spirit, the Bible did not tell us what happened to him. We know that he received the Holy Spirit when Samuel anointed him. In the book of Psalms, King David prayed to the Most High and asked him not to take the Holy Spirit from him. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. You heard in the scriptures, when King Saul received the Holy Spirit, he began to prophesy. Israelites, when you receive the Holy Spirit, don't expect your experience to be like King Saul and the countless others who received the Holy Spirit and began to speak in tongues. Many things can happen to you when you receive the Holy Spirit. Not everyone experience is going to be identical with the Holy Spirit. That is why your journey is a personal relationship. Also, you must work out your own salvation. Remember, Israelites, my journey is not going to be identical to your journey. Don't force yourself to be where the Most High hasn't opened the door for you to be. We all have our own destiny. That is why we are on different stages in our spiritual journey. Israelites, you must refrain from tearing a person down simply because they are not where you are. In addition, they don't have the wisdom you have. The scripture said in the book of Corinthians that the Holy Spirit come with diverse gifts. All of these gifts come from the Most High. Some of us can receive the gift to prophesy, wisdom, knowledge, healing, miracles, diverse tongues, and interpretation. Now there are diversities of gifts, but the same Spirit. And there are differences of administrations, but the same Lord. And there are diversities of operations, but it is the same God which worketh all in all. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. But to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge by the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another the gifts of healing by the same Spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another divers kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. But all these work it that one and the self same Spirit, dividing to every man severally as he will. As you can see, Israelites, you may receive the Holy Spirit and receive the gift of healing. Another person received the Holy Spirit and obtained the gift of miracles. Not everyone who received the Holy Spirit will have the gift of speaking in tongues. Israelites, don't let the workers of iniquity make you feel inadequate simply because you don't speak in diverse tongues. The Most High did not give all of us the gift by the Holy Spirit to speak in tongues. The doctrine of needing evidence by speaking in tongue is a false doctrine that comes from Rome. Every doctrine that have come from the mother harlot have been proven to be false by the truth that is in the scriptures. 
I didn't have to alter the scriptures to show you what is written in the word. Everyone who read the scriptures with the Holy Spirit will find the truth hiding in plain sight. If the mother harlot was established by the Most High, why does every doctrine it teach contradict the words of the Most High? So far, nothing they do uphold the righteousness of the Most High. Israelites, come out of her and stop following their doctrines of devils. And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people, that ye be not partakers of her sins, and that ye receive not of her plagues. Now that you know you don't need to provide anyone with evidence that you have the Holy Spirit by speaking in tongues, the scripture said by observing a person's behavior and character will reveal if they are of the Most High. Only a person with little faith requires evidence. I know a lot of you are wondering how does a person receive the Holy Spirit? Israelites, the scriptures has a way for you to receive the Holy Ghost. The scriptures show you how to receive the Holy Spirit. I'm not surprised because the scriptures have two messiahs, two chosen people, as well as two gods of Israel. Remember, the Satans used the heathens to infiltrate the scriptures. They altered the scriptures to mold the word of the Most High to fit their narratives. When you have the Holy Spirit, the truth of the Most High's words will reveal itself. Every time the people receive the Holy Ghost, they begin to speak in tongues. Speaking in tongues seems to be the only gift the Holy Ghost has. The requirement for a person to receive the Holy Ghost is to believe in Jesus, be baptized in the name of Jesus, and you would receive the Holy Ghost by speaking in tongues. To him give all the prophets witness that through his name whosoever believeth in him shall receive remission of sins. While Peter yet spake these words, the Holy Ghost fell on all them which heard the word. And they of the circumcision which believed were astonished, as many as came with Peter, because that on the Gentiles also was poured out the gift of the Holy Ghost. For they heard them speak with tongues and magnify God. Then answered Peter, Can any man forbid water, that these should not be baptized, which have received the Holy Ghost as well as we? And he commanded them to be baptized in the name of the Lord. Then prayed they him to tarry certain days. There is another scripture in the book of Acts that said when Paul came to Ephesus, he found some disciples. Paul asked them if they received the Holy Ghost since they believe in Jesus. The man said they never heard about the Holy Ghost. Paul asked them unto who were you baptized? They said they received the baptism of John. Paul said to them they had to be baptized in the name of Jesus. Afterwards, Paul laid his hands upon them, then the Holy Ghost came on them, and they began to speak in tongues and prophesied. And it came to pass that while Apollos was at Corinth, Paul, having passed through the upper coasts, came to Ephesus, and finding certain disciples, he said unto them, Have ye received the Holy Ghost since ye believed? And they said unto him, We have not so much as heard whether there be any Holy Ghost. And he said unto them, Unto what then were ye baptized? And they said, Unto John's baptism. Then said Paul, John verily baptized with the baptism of repentance, saying unto the people that they should believe on him which should come after him, that is, on Christ Jesus. When they heard this, they were baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. And when Paul had laid his hands upon them, the Holy Ghost came on them. And they spake with tongues and prophesied. Both the scriptures on Peter and Paul's account are identical to the doctrine of having to accept Jesus as your Lord and Savior to be saved and to receive eternal life. If you've been following the unmasking of the scriptures with truth, Jesus is the God of this world. Jesus is the counterfeit Messiah that was inserted in the scriptures. I'm not sure how can anyone receive the Most High Spirit by the name of Jesus when Jesus is not even his name. Israelites, these are the kind of alterations you will see in the scriptures when the Holy Spirit is guiding you into all truth. The way you receive the counterfeit spirit, the Holy Ghost, align perfectly with the counterfeit Messiah and the counterfeit chosen people inserted in the scriptures by the synagogue of Satan. I will keep repeating this saying until every Israelite understand this truth. 
a ghost cannot be holy. A ghost cannot comfort you. They terrorize you. A ghost cannot teach you all things because a ghost is dead. The Most High is not the God of the dead. He is not the God of the dead, but the God of the living. Ye therefore do greatly err. The Holy Spirit is living and very much alive. The Holy Spirit abide in you. The Messiah said to his disciples that he will pray to the Father to send another comforter that will abide in us forever. The Messiah said the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit because the world doesn't know the Holy Spirit. Israelites, if the world cannot receive the Holy Spirit, by what spirit are the people in the pagan church being filled with every Sunday? It's definitely not the spirit of the Most High. The Messiah said to his disciples, you know the Holy Spirit and the Spirit dwell with you and the Holy Spirit will be in them. The Messiah went on to say that he will not leave them comfortless. If you love me, keep my commandments and I will pray the Father and he shall give you another comforter that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth whom the world cannot receive because it seeth him not, neither knoweth him. But ye know him, for he dwelleth with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. The scriptures said the comforter live in us and will abide in us forever. The Messiah didn't say we had to believe in his name to receive the Holy Spirit. Before the Messiah said to his disciples that he would pray to the Father, the scripture said, if you love me, keep my commandments. I made sure to include that verse. Israelites, it's not about you accepting Jesus as your Lord and Savior to have the Holy Spirit. It's about you keeping the laws, statutes, and commandments of the Most High. In addition, true repentance must occur. If you're righteous, you will have the Spirit of the Most High abiding with you, just as the scripture said. Remember I said to you earlier, it's all about your heart with the Most High. When your heart is pure, you will see the Most High. Blessed are the pure in heart, but they shall see God. Israelites, the scripture said, draw near to the Most High and he will draw near to you. If you honor the statutes, commandments, and laws of the Most High, as well as having a repented heart, you have the Holy Spirit. It's the Holy Spirit that will teach you all things. If you're a part of the remnant, you have the Holy Spirit. The problem many Israelites are facing today is that you're looking for confirmation of having the Holy Spirit by how religion and television have shown what receiving the Holy Spirit looks like. Like I said to you before, everyone's journey is different. When the Messiah received the Holy Spirit, everyone saw a dove come down from the heavens and rested on the Messiah. Afterwards, everyone heard a voice said, this is my son with him I am pleased. When all the people were being baptized, Jesus was baptized too. And as he was praying, heaven was open, and the Holy Spirit descended on him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son whom I love. With you, I am well pleased. The people didn't see tongues of fire resting on the Messiah, but a dove. Everyone's personal experience with the Father is different. Some of you who have repented and humbled yourself before the Most High received the Spirit and didn't even know that you had the Spirit of the Most High. If you're not sure, look at your talents. What are you good at? Can you prophesy, heal the sick, speak in diverse tongues? Do you have great wisdom and knowledge? Do you recognize the voice of the Most High when the Holy Spirit speaks to you? Everyone that belongs to the Most High know His voice. The scriptures gave us an account to when the Holy Spirit spoke to Peter. While Peter thought on the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Israelites, if King Saul had the Spirit of the Most High, everyone the Most High has called in this generation has the Spirit of the Most High. A lot of you have the Holy Spirit. However, the Spirit of unbelief is hindering you from seeing the Spirit of the Most High that abide in you. The scripture said, you are the temple that housed the spirit of the Most High. Know ye not that ye are the temple of God and that the spirit of God dwelleth in you? If any man defile the temple of God, him shall God destroy. 
but the temple of God is holy, which temple ye are. Israelites, you didn't wake yourself out of your slumber. The Most High woke you up via his spirit dwelling in you. He called you out of religion into the awakening to get to know the truth. The only one that can reveal truth to you is the Holy Spirit. Everyone who have found this channel and understand the deep things of the Most High from this channel has the Holy Spirit. The scripture said it's the Holy Spirit that searches the deep things of the Most High and reveal it to us by his Spirit. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of man which is in him? Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. You and I wouldn't understand the deep things of the Most High if the Holy Spirit wasn't leading us into all truth. The deep things of the Most High is not going to be understood by the majority. Only a select few receive the knowledge from this channel. That is why so many misunderstand the messages. Another way I can help you understand that the Holy Spirit abides in you, the Most High said in the last days, he will pour out his spirit on all flesh. Everyone will dream dreams and prophesy. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. And your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. And also upon the servants and upon the handmaids in those days. Will I pour out my spirit? As you heard in the scriptures, Israelites, it was prophesied that in the last days, the Most High would pour out his spirit. The people would begin to prophesy and dream dreams. According to the scriptures in the book of Acts, on the day of Pentecost, Peter proclaimed that the prophecy said by Joel in the Old Testament of the Most High pouring out his spirit on all flesh happened when the Holy Spirit came and rested on everyone that gathered in the room on the day of Pentecost. But Peter, standing up with the eleven, lifted up his voice and said unto them, Ye men of Judea, and all ye that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. But these are not drunken as ye suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel, and it shall come to pass, in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams, and on my servants and on my handmaidens I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Peter and the generation alive during the time of Pentecost lived many years ago. We are several generations after the day of Pentecost. This would conclude that the Most High has poured out his spirit on us. Israelites, to doubt that you have the spirit is irrelevant. The question one must ask, how do I become one with the spirit of the Most High? Everyone who have the Holy Ghost must be filled with the Holy Ghost every two to three business days. Everyone who have the true spirit of the Most High is sealed with the spirit until the day of redemption. The Messiah said the Holy Spirit shall abide in you forever. The only person I've read of the spirit of the Most High departing from them was King Saul. Israelites, know that the spirit of the Most High abide in you. That is why the scripture said not to grieve the spirit of the Most High. And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. Israelites, don't let the workers of iniquity in the beast religion give you confirmation on whether you have the Holy Spirit or not. They don't know the Holy Spirit and they cannot receive the Holy Spirit. Therefore, they are not qualified to tell you. The workers of iniquity can only confirm if you have the Holy Ghost because the Holy Ghost is not of the Most High. These workers of iniquity send the Holy Ghost after you to keep you bound spiritually. That is why they can confirm if you have the Holy Ghost. When it comes to the affairs of the Most High, they don't know. Israelites, as long as you repent wholeheartedly, return to serve the Father in truth, you humble yourself before the Most High. The Spirit of the Most High abide in you. The Most High has sealed the righteous with His Spirit. Israelites, walking in the Spirit is truly letting go and allowing the Most High to order your steps. 
you trust the most high enough to allow him to lead you. For example, every message posted on this channel are messages the Holy Spirit revealed to me. The only way the Most High can direct your steps is if you allow the Holy Spirit to lead you. The scripture said the steps of a good man are ordered by the Most High. The steps of a good man are ordered by the Lord, and he delighteth in his way. It's impossible to say that you serve the Most High and you don't have his Spirit. The Most High order your steps by his Spirit. The Holy Spirit is described as the inner, gentle, quiet voice. Many of you know that voice. The beast culture calls the voice of the Holy Spirit your intuition. The voice of the Most High through the Holy Spirit is the still small voice many of you ignore. It's the voice or the prompting that alert you and tell you to turn around or take another road. It's the prompting to leave a public place five minutes before a tragedy struck. It's the inner voice that tells you to repent. It's that inner voice that led you out of religion. It's that eerie feeling you had every time you walk into the church. For those of you who are Israelites, it's the feeling of knowing something wasn't right about you being just a descendant of slaves. Israelites, there's a lot more that could be said. All you have to do is look within, for the kingdom of the Most High is within you. Neither shall they say, Lo here, or Lo there, or behold, the kingdom of God is within you. Every time you follow that still small voice that is not invasive at all, you allow the Most High to direct your path through His Holy Spirit. I told you, Israelites, your spiritual journey is not religious. The Most High is right there with you. Walking in the Spirit is honoring the Most High and obeying His statutes, commandments, and laws. Walking in the Spirit is living a life that pleases the Most High. I know as Israelites, we're not used to structure and order. We're used to chaos at home, at work, and everywhere that we go. The Most High didn't leave us comfortless. The Holy Spirit that connects all of us together is the Spirit of the Most High that operates through us. It's the Holy Spirit that teaches us all things, just as the Messiah said the Comforter would do. But the Comforter, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the Father will send in my name, he shall teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance, whatsoever I have said unto you. Israelites, it's the Holy Spirit that teach me and I share with you. The time has come for you to trust the inner voice that abide in you to help you. Don't neglect the Spirit of the Most High. Sometimes the Holy Spirit is going to direct you on a path that doesn't make sense. The Most High take you on a scary path so that you can learn to trust Him. Walking in the Spirit would take time for some of you to get used to. Many of you believe you're the one in control of your life. You're not. If the Most High is not ordering your steps, the kingdom of darkness is ordering your steps via the Holy Ghost. Israelites, it's up to you to decide whom you're going to allow to direct your path. Walking in the Spirit is not some spiritual gift that one must have from the Father. Walking in the Spirit is truly a way of life. Everyone who truly returns to serve the Father in the Spirit and in truth is walking in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the one that will guide you onto the narrow road that leads to life. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. When you're on the narrow road, you will truly see why only a few will find the way that leads to life. Walking in the Spirit is truly dying to self and allowing the Most High to show Himself strong through you. Every Israelite that wants to see the power of the Most High in their life will allow the Holy Spirit to direct their path. Israelites, the time has come for you to allow the Comforter, the Messiah, pray to the Father for you to help you. Don't ignore the Holy Spirit that wants to reveal the affairs of the Most High to you. We are the generation that must live in the Spirit and in truth. In order to obey the Most High, to worship and serve Him in the Spirit and in truth, we must have the Holy Spirit. If you allow the Most High to teach you and lead you on your spiritual journey, everything will begin to make sense to you. It's only when you allow man to lead you, that is where the spirit of confusion finds its opportunity to distort the word of the Most High. Israelites, allow the Most High to show you who He is via His Spirit. But this shall be the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel. After those days, saith the Lord, I will put my law in their inward parts and write it in their hearts. 
and will be their God, and they shall be my people. And they shall teach no more every man his neighbor and every man his brother, saying, Know the Lord. For they shall all know me, from the least of them unto the greatest of them, saith the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity, and I will remember their sin no more. 